Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel, we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. I have a variety of services that I offer to assist in your awakening journey, and you can find those listed in the description box below. Today, we're going to be doing a reading for the 5-5 portal, and this is occurring on May 5th, 2022. We call it the 5-5 portal because it is the fifth day of the fifth month of the year. Last year was a five-year, numerologically speaking, so we had the 555 portal, and that enhanced those energies and really magnified the significance of the energy because of that extra five. This is a six-year this year for 2022, so the 666 portal is going to be the crowning portal of the year, uh, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And of course, we did have the 222 portal, which was very huge, considering that 2022 is the final year wrapping up a whole uh, litany of years where we've had these really powerful repeating two days where we see the repetitions of that number two. So there's a lot of powerful numerological significance to the year 2022. For this video, however, we are focusing specifically on the five energy. Five is the energy of change. So we can expect a lot of shifts and a lot of changes as we move through this five five portal. I always feel when we're working with this five energy, the changes that are happening not only on an outer level as far as in our, our lives and environment, but also the changes that are happening at a DNA level, the shifts and changes happening to our light bodies. When we experience these portals, they are like stargates. They're these openings of energy where we're receiving a lot of high vibrational energy, a lot of activations and downloads. There are so many different ways that these energies can affect and influence us. And so we're going to tap into the energies through the cards and see uh, what messages we can get clear. Surrounding guidance for this 5-5 portal. Any blessings that might be coming through. Uh, anything that Spirit wants to tell us about this energy and how to best utilize and maximize it. May is always a powerful month because it is a five month. But this May is especially powerful because we have two eclipses occurring. We have one which is technically on the 30th of April, but it's really opening up the energies of May. And then we have another eclipse on the 16th. The video for that first eclipse is already out and the second one will be coming out shortly. Uh, but those are powerful energies of change as well. So there's a lot of shifts that we can be expecting to experience as we move through this dynamic month. Oh yeah, you guys, first card out here. The blue flame, spontaneous awakening activation. It also says integration time, all right? So we are integrating many of the activations that we've already received. This has been a powerful year astrologically as well. We had that dynamic conjunction of Neptune and Jupiter. And as we move into May, we have Venus meeting up with Neptune and Jupiter. Just a lot of beautiful activations there. Just so much, so much going on for us uh, throughout this first half of 2022. So there is an aspect of integration here. But there's, there's still, there's, there's, I'm feeling the spontaneous awakening aspect here more than anything. Just powerful realizations and awakenings. It's like the energy of epiphany. When I was doing a card pull for the general energies of May itself, the tower was the first card that came out. And that's what this, this feels like. It's like huge, powerful awakenings. And when I say huge, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's something that completely um, blows your mind, right? It doesn't have to be like an earth-shattering realization, but the awakenings that are occurring, even if they don't feel like that, that um, like they're changing the whole bedrock of how you understand yourself and the world around you, it may not be a dynamic shift like that. They may feel subtle, but even if they feel subtle, the impact that these realizations and shifts are having is much, much greater than we, than we might perceive or be able to understand. And so if you don't have any sort of grand awakening uh, during this 5-5 portal, don't worry that nothing's happening. 
all right? Because there's much more occurring than you realize. Those little subtle shifts really add up to something big. But for some people, it, it, there is going to be this energy of um, just these spontaneous, uh, unprecedented or unpredicted little awakenings, awakenings and epiphanies happening. It feels like some of the people, it feels almost like, say you have somebody in your life that you, that you've been sort of, you've been watching their process as they've been moving through the last few years and you've gotten to this point where you're just like, I don't know if they're ever going to get it. I don't know if this person is ever going to wake up. You know, I don't know if they're ever, their perception is ever going to shift. And you've gone through this process of accepting that. But some of those people that we least expect are going to awaken in a major way. That's what this feels like to me. And it really feels like contact with our guides. Like, if you look really closely, you can almost see a figure in that blue flame. And so I feel like this 5-5 five, five portal is really going to be granting us to a deeper realization or a deeper, um, a deeper connection with our guides. It's like they're going to be able to come through and activate us. It feels like, um, like people who have been desiring a, a certain level of activation for a really long time, you're going to be receiving something that you've been waiting for. That's what it feels like. Like, um, say that you're someone kind of like me who uh, is very involved and aware of their ascension process, but feels like there's this certain, this certain um, level of activation that they just haven't received yet. You know, it's like um, you're, you're experiencing synchronicities and you're experiencing like this gentle and subtle shifting of your perception and your energies. Uh, but nothing, nothing too, I don't want to say impressive, uh, but <laughs> that's like the word I want to use right now. Nothing too impressive has really occurred um, for you. Nothing that really, um, it's just been underwhelming. It's kind of like that sort of an energy. Um, something, there is an activation that you're going to be able to directly experience now. It's, and that's sort of what's coming through is like, You've already had the activation, even though you can't consciously perceive of it and not very much has shifted in your conscious perception as far as the materialization, the way that your gifts are manifesting, anything like that. Like you haven't seen or felt the effects of it, but the activation's already taken place. That's what this integration time is talking about. Now it's fully integrated and you're going to be experiencing sort of the, the effects of that activation that you've already received. And so for some, it may feel like a spontaneous awakening, but it's not really. It's been building up over time. It's been integrating. And now you're going to be able to bring it forward. And for some of you guys, this like really does heavily involve your guides or your perception of the spirit or the non-physical realms and your connection to those non-physical realms. And I appreciate you guys for bearing with me right now uh, as I'm going through um, into this uh, this third trimester of my pregnancy here, like my mind is like sludge sometimes. It's uh, it's been it's been pretty challenging, and um, my breathing. I'm carrying a lot around a lot of extra me and a lot of extra baby right now, so my breath is a little. I'm a little. I get out of breath easy. I guess is what I'm trying to say, and so um, 
just thank you for bearing with me as we're moving through this. But we're getting there. We're we're getting through to to, to uh, the messages and what's trying what's trying to come through here. It just it may take a little bit of extra time <laughs> to tap in right now. All right, so we have all paths lead home coming out. This is about inner authority, intuition, turn your gaze within. So what this feels like to me is gaining a lot more confidence in our path. Confidence in ourselves, confidence in our path, and confidence in our ability to walk that path. And to receive and execute the guidance surrounding that journey. And it's like we're really learning how to not look outside of ourselves for that guidance and to really tap into our own internal wisdom. Like, yes, it's an interesting kind of combination here, right? Because we have this energy where it feels like people are getting more, more tapped into contact with their guides. Uh, but it's also deeper contact with your higher self. Yeah, there's a, I keep getting called back to this image of the blue flame here. It's like, um, just a powerful, powerful light body activations. Yeah, but it's, it's really, um, learning. Yes, learning how to getting this better connection with your guides, but also understanding them as simply another bridge that helps you to connect more with your own higher self. Because ultimately, we're all meant to be guided by our own higher selves, by our own knowing. And this energy of all paths lead home. I keep being called back to that phrase at the, on this card. And it's this energy of Finally having the confidence in ourselves and our own journey to not constantly be worried that we're making the wrong choice or we're making the wrong decision, right? All paths lead home. We're always going to get to where we're meant to be, right? Regardless of the path that we choose. It's always going to lead, whatever path we choose is always going to lead us. It's like this energy of inevitability too. It's like no matter what you choose, it's all going to lead you to the same place. What is the experience you want, you want to have along the way? That is the free will, right? That's the, 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 um, the fate versus the free will. You're going to all, you're always going to end up at the same destination, but what experiences do you want to have on the way there? Don't worry, just choose the experience that you most want to have. It's kind of like those choose your own adventure books. It's like you can't possibly make the wrong choice. What do you want to experience? What do you want most right now? Don't worry so much about whether it's right or wrong. If it's what you want, if it's what you most want to experience, then it's always right. And it's always right on time, I feel like I want to say. It's like people who feel like they missed, they missed their chance, they missed their shot, they missed their opportunity. You didn't. You're right on time. I'm having the image right now of like when you're running to catch the bus and you didn't make it there quite soon enough and you see the doors closing shut. It's kind of like when you're in the subway and the doors close shut right in front of your face and you can't get them back open and the car starts moving. Okay. You didn't miss the bus. You didn't miss, you didn't miss your train. That wasn't your train. If that was your train, you would have been on it. All right. So it's like learning to trust that. And then we have the double mission on the bottom of the decks, so light worker, star seed, serve the world by being you. So it's really this energy of author, inner authority and authenticity. Really embracing who it is that we are in the world. A deeper appreciation for us and the unique life that we bring to this world. All right, now we have perspective and called coming out. So 
So this is us really being asked to cultivate this energy of detachment. To have that greater, grander perspective. All paths lead home, remember? There are no wrong choices. There are no wrong decisions. There's just different lessons that we want to learn, different experiences that we want to have. All the little things. If you've been getting to this point where you've been allowing the little things to get to you too much, where you found yourself hyper-focusing on the little details, on getting really hung up on circumstances or things that are happening or not happening, and um, giving things more importance than they really hold. Right? Giving things, attributing a greater meaning to events and circumstances than, than what's truly there. And I think that, that that's a big thing that a lot of us struggle with, right? Because when we start realizing that everything has significance, right? That nothing is insignificant. There is no coincidence. Uh, we start, uh, sometimes we can get almost too intense with that, where every little thing that happens is an omen or a sign, right? We're trying to interpret every tiny little event as something, as something deeply meaningful, and it's not to say that every little event doesn't have meaning, but it doesn't necessarily have quite as much meaning as we attribute to it. Sometimes that energy can, can be likened to uh, creating a, a mountain out of a molehill. Like, we want to be really careful. I feel like this came up in a reading the other day, so this is like a really important energy for us to understand. Don't attribute too much meaning to every little thing. Be aware. Notice when things are connecting right? Notice, uh, be open to what each moment is trying to teach you, but don't read too much into every little thing. This is like, uh, you know, those of us who, who deal with social anxiety and different things like that. When we have a conversation with somebody and we're interpreting every tiny little, little micro, micro movement, right? Every, every, uh, change in tone, and this is a habit that comes to not just from social anxiety, but from trauma, right? Where we had to, we had to interpret, we had to anticipate people's reactions and people's emotions and what they were going to do beforehand in order to be safe, right? That comes from that as well. But it's this energy where like you, you interpret through your perspective, right? Through your own, your own bias, and yes, your own wounding and trauma sometimes, what you think somebody is thinking about you. Or you interpret that they're like, uh, you're, you're trying to analyze every little thing that they said and did to try to get at some deeper meaning behind an interaction with somebody. Right? And we can convince ourselves in our minds that there was this monumental thing that occurred when it was just a simple conversation that didn't hold much weight in the other person's mind one way, one way or the other. It's like that kind of an energy. That's an example of how we can drive ourselves crazy. So we leave a conversation that the other person didn't think anything of, and we're obsessing over the interaction for hours, right? It's that kind of a thing, attributing too much meaning to things that are really have limited, limited meaning. And it's just also, it's, it's remembering... And this is, uh, I'm, I'm reading a great book about Neptune right now. So this card is really making me think it's, it's really Neptunian uh, in, in sort of the, uh, the way that it asks us to really look at, what's, look at the things that are transpiring in our lives through the lens of the infinity of the multiverse, Right? Like, yes, there are some really important things that we're doing right now. But honestly, sometimes I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, I guess. But everything has meaning, right? Everything has meaning. <laughs> we're not going to go there. <laughs> but um, sometimes we get too serious even when we're talking about the ascension, right? Like, this is the most important event that has ever occurred on this planet. The entire, the entire galaxy is watching. This is so, like, we, we place so much heaviness and importance on what we're doing here. And that's not to say that it's not important. 
but it's also to say that like regardless of what happens on this little planet the multiverse will continue to exist right our souls will continue to exist everything is infinite and it is so much bigger than we can even imagine that's sort of the energy that we get when we gaze up at the stars, right? And we, or we stare out at the ocean and we see how vast it is. And it makes us feel small. But it doesn't make us feel small in an insignificant way, just in a humbling way. Right? That awe that we feel from that. Like, don't forget. Yes, you are important. Yes, everything is important. But at the same time, it's not that serious. All right, so um, just allow yourself to relax a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of like the energy that I'm getting here. At the same time, like we are being called forward. We're being called to really step into and embrace our soul gifts. There is, there has been an incredible, there has been everything that you've been experiencing Especially if you've been going through a particularly challenging time, right? A time of initiation. That's all been preparing you for whatever it is that you're ready to step into now. And I think that that's where this energy of, of importance and sort of inflaming the importance of things comes up. Because when we feel like what we're doing is such a big deal. It almost paralyzes us because it feels so important and so impressive that we're, we're, uh, we're afraid to ask. We're afraid to step up because we have that energy of like, well, what if I'm not ready? What if I blow it? Right? It's almost like we, we feel like the entire cosmos is going to crumble if we take, if we do something that we feel we're not ready for, if we mess something up. Right. Like if we uh, like like we are that important that what if we if we fumble the ball, the entire game is blown right for the entire the entire universe. And so um, that's why it's so important to let go of that energy and to relax a little bit, because uh, we will we will be we will paralyze ourselves forever. That fear will keep us paralyzed. That doubt. Right. That sense of inflated importance. Every single one of us is important. Right? But at the same time, it's like the entire future of the, of the cosmos doesn't rest on you. There, that's why there's a whole squad of us. All right? So relax a little bit. Um, be, be gentle with yourself. Right? Be gentle with yourself. Be loving with yourself. Know that you can't make the wrong choice because all paths lead home. All right? Zoom out. See the greater, grander picture of things. See yourself as one element within a very complex organism. All right? And know that, um, that everything's going to be okay. And you are, you are worthy. You are good enough. You are ready. To take the next step. You've been, you've been training, you've been training for this for lifetimes. This is not your first rodeo. I think is that, no, that's a different card on the bottom of the deck. I was thinking it might've been that there is a card that says you've been training for this for lifetimes. All right. As your gifts begin to awaken, it's time to step into them. It's time to embrace them. And it's time to like take, but take some of the pressure off of yourself at the same time. On the bottom of the deck here, we did have the star keeper, which is all about our cosmic ancestors and seeding the light by staying grounded. There's a lot of powerful light coming in anytime we have these portals, right? And with these eclipses, any of these major astrological events. So this is a great reminder um, to make sure that we are grounding ourselves and centering ourselves in order to be of assistance to Gaia in helping to channel that light for her. Loosen your grip. So this is all about density, releasing density, addictions, coping mechanisms, all of those behaviors, those habits. 
What have you been holding on to that's, that's wanting to be released, that's wanting to be let go? We all have something, right? Some aspects of our identity, some people, some places, some things, some, way, some ways of viewing the world, right? Some perspectives that we, that we hang on to. And we're being asked to, it's like, uh, the, remember, five, it's all about changes. We are shifting and changing. The world around us is shifting and changing. Allow those shifts and changes to occur. It's like we're hanging on. Some of us are hanging on to these final pieces that want to be let go. Because we've surrendered most of ourselves, but we're afraid to surrender all of ourselves. Spirit is wanting to relieve you of some burden that you've been carrying. And perhaps if for a long time it didn't feel like a burden. It felt like something that was assisting you, right? That's, that's how addiction, addiction comes to pass, right? We think it's something, we think it's something that it's, that's assisting us. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it absolutely is. Right? Our coping mechanisms kept us alive at one point. They kept us safe. It's hard to understand, and especially for our subconscious and our ego to process when we don't need those things anymore. Because we are safe now. Right? It's like the ego and the subconscious can't process and understand when the things that once helped us are now hurting us. It's the same thing with any addiction. You know, uh, when I look back at my history with substance abuse, right? There was a period in a time in my life where I don't know, I don't know that I would have survived without substances. Honestly, I probably, I, I do have, I do have a history of um, self-harm. I did attempt to take my life uh, before when I was younger before I, I found substances and they, they did save my life in a way for a time because they allowed life to become bearable enough that I didn't want to end it anymore. Right. They gave me, they gave me something to live for as crazy as that sounds. And for a long time, what they gave me was enough. And then it wasn't. And it's that very insidious thing where the thing that saved you, and this can be applied to anything, toxic relationships, um, absolutely anything. The thing that saved you becomes the thing that's killing you. But you can't see. It's that kind of an energy. And that's why it's so hard to let some of these things go because at one point they were really good for us in their own way. They really helped us. Right, we were talking earlier, we used the example about uh, being able to anticipate what people were going to do and how that's a trauma response and how that response was honed in order to keep us alive. But now it's just making us crazy and causing us to overanalyze everyone and everything. All right, this is the kind of stuff that we're talking about here. And this is why it's so hard to release, it's so hard to let go. Uh, so we have to really be, be able to come to understand and process that, that we're okay now, that we're safe now, that we don't need those things anymore because we've evolved past them. So it's like spirit wants to come in and heal some of this for you. Spirit wants to come in and show you how much you've grown and how much safer you are now, how much stronger and more powerful you are. And these things that we're hanging on to are now impeding our progress instead of assisting us in continuing to move forward. All right. Last card from this deck. We have Child of the Cosmos, the intelligence of the universe lies within you. The entire universe lies within you, right? So know that, remember that, really embrace Your cosmic self. This is like embracing the cosmic self. But also embracing the human self and the human journey. 
It's like our cosmic selves are learning how to be more at home in this physical reality. How can we be both at once? And we're really, I mean, in a powerful way, we are gaining access to this. It's like I'm noticing the blue in this card, too. That blue energy feels especially relevant. Right? So that's the energy of the throat chakra, of the higher chakras. There's something with the blue, the blue ray, the blue energy, the blue flame, right? This speaking, this communication with your higher self, with your guides, with the cosmos, the universe itself. Really stepping into a deeper sense of communion with our higher selves and the wisdom that they have to carry, as well as the wisdom of our ancestors, right? Our star ancestors, our star family, really coming through strongly and powerfully. There's like a very, a deeper level of wisdom that's ready to be activated within you and expressed in the world. Yeah, there's some connection here, too. I feel like um, all the little the little star seeds, right, the little baby star seeds, I feel like they're being majorly activated uh, through this five, ener five, five energy as well, which would make sense. I mean, this one's been going nuts uh, the past week or so, just constantly, constantly on the move. Let's see, what else do we want to do here to tap into this energy? I want to I wanna grab some... Secret language of light cards here. Let's get some uh, clear. Let's get some guidance for this 5-5 five, five portal. Yeah. Card number 44, expansion. Massive expansion of that light body, you guys. You can see this, like you can see the kundalini energy there, the item, the pingala. Some people have been feeling those major kundalini activations stirring lately. Definitely a massive higher chakra activation, too. It's like really getting activated at, what is this, the stellar gateway chakra? This, the, this, uh, these higher chakras here, soul stars, stellar gateway, whatever, whichever, right? All those, <laughs> they all kind of blend together for me, these higher ones, right? It's just higher and higher states of consciousness that they allow us to access. But it's like we're, we're receiving the activation from way up there and it's coming down, right? Down through our entire chakra system. And that's why it's so important to stay grounded, because with all of this high vibrational energy, if we can't ground it, if we can't ground ourselves, it's literally, it's like it'll just fry our circuits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was doing a, um, I was doing a, uh, healing on myself the other night. And, uh, I had this, um, this visual of my solar plexus, kind of like, like a blown out solar plexus kind of an energy. And one of the messages that came through was just about running, when we're running really high voltage energy, it's like we need that, we need to make sure that we're running that through our entire system, that our system is clear and that we are grounded, that we have somewhere to ground that energy. So really make sure that you're doing that. As you're expanding up here, bring that expansion down, all right? root that down. 
we got visualize on the bottom of the deck. So really working with that energy of visualization. Our visualizations are going to go a long way in this energy. But it's like, notice the expansion. It's not just up and down. It's going out as well. All right. Yeah, 24 wellness. So really focusing on our healing. Working with right, this, you can see this card makes me think of yoga as well. All right, so really working with moving the physical body, that's going to assist us in this expansion process in um, allowing the energy to flow through, right? If we're, uh, yoga is a great way to do that, dance, anything that's channeling these energies in a physical way is really going to help them to move through your body and integrate within your body. Really focusing on taking care of ourselves, right? Nourishing the mind, body, and spirit with special emphasis on the body right now, right? Because our bodies, they're, they're the ones that are struggling the most. They're trying to keep up with all this light coming in. I was just watching um, some sort of transmission on YouTube. Uh, it's just something that I was scrolling past that caught my cur curiosity, piqued my curiosity. Um, channelings from the Pleiadians regarding um, the, the major shifts that are happening. And they talked about how something similar to what we, uh, what we many call like the great solar flash, right? We've talked about that energy. There's a video that Pete and, Pete and I did on that, uh, talking about how we don't want to put too much stock in, in that, um, in that energy, right? And the, the waiting, the waiting for that to save us. And there was some of that energy in this video. Uh, but something that it did talk about was how every 13,000 years, according to this transmission, there is uh, such a thing as that we would equate to like the great solar flash. And typically it wipes out civilizations. They talked about how there were uh, five civilizations before us. And I've heard this actually in multiple channelings. Five civilizations before us who were destroyed right when they were reaching the peak of their, um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Evolution, I guess you would say. That were destroyed by this, this powerful energy coming in. And how this, and they reference the sixth sun, and there's actually a video I did on this. Uh, you can look through my playlists. I'm not sure which playlist it's in, but the dawning of the sixth sun. All right, and so the sixth sun would be the sixth civilization according to this transmission I was listening to. And this is a civilization that, that is uh, supposed to be able to survive this major influx in light that has um, destroyed us in the past incarnations and past, past civilizations, past expressions of our soul energy because we're prepared for it now. Because we've reached a level of evolution mind, body, and spirit that's allowing us to be able to, to take in this energy. But it's still a lot. And so we need to especially uh, be, be uh, mindful of the physical, but of course, absolutely all of it, right? Because nothing's separate. So the mind, the body, and the spirit are all connected as we know. We see that heart energy there and we see that sword. And so something else that I'm feeling from this card is this energy of getting clarity in our heart space. Something in our heart, some truth within our hearts becoming more clear as we move through this energy. It's like um, if our minds have drowned out the truth within our hearts, our hearts get louder. Our hearts speak to us and they're able to communicate to us something that we, we need to know. Something that we've been missing. So a clearing of the heart chakra and a, and a deep, deeper level of clarity within the heart space. And then the soul song. Feeling that, having that soul song activated, right? And we talk about this sometimes, this energy of the soul song. And how... Uh, the soul song is akin to shining our light, right? But it's our vibration. It's our essence and the way that that emanates out into the ether, out into the, the, to the universe and draws to us our soul tribe, 
draws to us everything that's meant for us, right? We can tune into somebody's soul song. The more authentic we become, the more barriers we break down, right? The more walls we let down, the more we let ourselves shine and, and stand in our truth and stand in our power, the louder our soul song gets and the more easily distinguishable it is to others. So uh, really um, allow yourself to sing your soul song. Allow your soul song to be your guide Oof, as we move forward. All right, let's see, what are we gonna do here? I am gonna pull a ga Gateway of Light Activation Oracle to close. Clear. All right, let's get some closing energy for this 5-5 five, five portal reading. Closing energy. I don't know, we might end up closing with the light worker oracle after this, I'm not sure. Okay, that flipped out. So we have Lemurian seed codes, embracing sensitivity, uniqueness, living with grace. So that Lemurian ancestry and energy being activated, right? Those, those, um, those strands of our DNA, perhaps those aspects of ourselves, that remembrance of our Lemurian heritage, right? Many of us present on this planet right now, we're present in Lemuria, right? One of those civilizations that we were talking about. And really being able to tap into that. And I'm feeling, um, if you have any Lemurian courts, work with it during this, work with it during this portal, because there's like a special activation. It's like, there are codes. And that's the thing that I love about Lemurian courts, Crystal, is you can see the striations in it. Right? And you know that those striations are encoded information. And um, yeah, a lot of that information that was encoded in those crystals that has not been available to us yet in order for us to, to absorb has been activated and we're able to absorb it now. So there's some major activations you can receive and some memories that you can receive through these crystals and the activation of these crystals. So definitely uh, work with your Lemurian Quartz if you have any. But this is also, as these Lemurian seed codes are being, are being activated, it's reminding us how to live as we did in those days, how to embrace our sensitivity, right? How to embrace what makes us special and unique and how to celebrate that in each other. How to live with grace, how to coexist and how to live respectfully with Mother Nature, right? It was a very beautiful, gentle, in many ways, culture. And it, uh, it goes right hand in hand with what's on the bottom of the deck here. We have the Gaia Gateway Activation, Learning Experiences, Wisdom Transmission, Earth Intelligence. So this is where it's like our ancient Earth origins are being activated. Our ancestry, and uh, the wisdom that we've accumulated through many lifetimes, living in many civilizations on this planet, like a lot of that old wisdom from these ancient civilizations is coming online for us. We're remembering more. And we're being asked to utilize that remembrance. And this isn't just like um, wisdom from past lives. Remember, there's a lot of wisdom that you've gained in this lifetime. Are you ready to apply that? Can you under begin to understand and see where that wisdom, that knowledge is applicable, right? This is an honoring of Gaia in every way, shape, and form, but especially as a teacher 
and an honoring of what it is that she has taught us that only she uniquely can teach. Right? That's why we came here, because there's something unique and special we get here that we can't get anywhere else. Right? So what has that been for you? What what were these learning experiences? Right? That that you um what what have you learned in all of your it's kind of like a a culmination of experiences and wisdom that's been garnered through many incarnations on this planet. And that's really all coming together and being synthesized right now. And there's a lot of energy and a lot of wisdom coming through that directly relates to how it is that we can live better on this planet. Right? What is that 5D template that we want to create for the way that we live consciously with the earth, with the planet? That's living with grace. And we synthesize that, of course, through the heart, stargate heart, heart chakra opening, unlocking, generosity. And we felt with that eclipse on April 30th, there's a major heart chakra activation. So that energy is just continuing to come through. I feel like it's um, this portal to the heart chakra really opened up with that new moon eclipse in Taurus on the 30th. And the ener it's just amplifying as we're moving through this gateway that uh, that really peaks on the 5th. The 5th is like the finale, if you think about the fireworks, right? Yeah, and then the Venusian Galactic Council under that. Star being guides answer the call, time to shine. More from our guides coming through. So much guidance coming through for us. So much support coming through for us. But the Venusian, once again, it's like tapping into our hearts. Tapping into our hearts, tapping into this this uh beautiful divine feminine way of living and relating with each other it's like we're receiving also these um these memories of the past so that we can apply them that wisdom to the future to create a better future I'm being called in a couple directions here to close but I do I do think I want to close with a light worker oracle Okay, that was quick. <laughs> we have alchemical, alchemical mutation coming out with Unplugged for Mass Consciousness. So this is the energy of ascension, right? Another level of our ascension process opening up. right? We talked about those physical changes, those DNA changes, all of that. Initiated with this five energy. And as we're going through this next aspect of our, of our ascension here, it's really important that we unplug from mass consciousness because this energy keeps trying to pull us back in. It keeps trying to pull us out of our process. And so to really uh, don't allow yourself to get hooked back into that. Hooked back into that fear narrative, right? Hooked back into this lower consciousness. Take your time to tap out of that so that you can tap more deeply into yourself. And really, uh, with this 5-5 five, five energy, if you can get out in nature and away from electronics and things like that, that would be really helpful as well. Uh, because that radiation, that interference of energy is really interfering with um, the ability of um, these energy. It's, it's interfering with your absorption and integration of these activations. All right, now we're going to close with an Archangel Oracle card because these were calling to me too. So this is clear. Our final closing guidance here for the 5-5 five, five portal. Give us some closing guidance. Closing Archangel. Oh, we got the Guardian Angel coming out. Love yourself unconditionally and ask for help. All right. And so as we're going through this energy, there's there's a um, vulnerability to it, right? With these massive heart chakra activations, 
we absolutely feel that vulnerability more acutely. And so uh, it brings us back to this, this energy of being a child, right? Of being helpless for some of us. And it's, um, yeah, I'm feeling like part of this heart chakra opening and activation is also, it's returning us to these, many of us revisiting these moments, right? In our childhood, when we felt alone, when we felt abandoned, it's like that, that little boy or girl that we were. It's like really reconnecting with that aspect of ourselves with a deeper level of compassion for ourselves. Really bringing deep healing to our inner child. To those aspects of our inner child that felt overlooked, ignored, unappreciated. Allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and ask for the help that we need as well. And this is also the healing, I feel like, of times when we were young and maybe we did ask for help and that help wasn't received and the, the, the wounds that that leaves. And it's like our guardian angel is telling us, our guides are telling us, we couldn't interfere in certain experiences that you needed to have. But we were there with you the entire time. And we may not have helped you in the way that you thought that you needed or that you wanted, but we were, we were still there and we were doing things that you know not of. But there are some things that we could not do. It's sort of like the energy of we have our free will, right? We have to ask for our angels help because they can't interfere with our free will. But there's our free will as this conscious human. There's also our free will as a soul. And so our soul, before we came down here, said sometimes to our guides, to our angels, you can help me. These are the parameters of how you may help me in this lifetime. These are the parameters of where I need to do it on my own. And maybe I almost feel like it's, this is kind of bringing a different energy into it, right? But um, it almost feels like, like a safe word was created for this human experience where it was like, don't help me, right? Let me figure this out on my own. This is really important for me. Even if I ask you for help, I'm telling you right now, do not help me unless I say this or unless I do this, unless I ask like this. All right. So there's, um. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. <laughs> but overall, there are certain experiences that we needed to have in order to evolve. And their hands were literally tied. Because we set that up before we came into this lifetime. It was really important that we experience that pain. Or that whatever. But they're saying, like, we were with you every step of the way. We were sending you healing, right? We were holding you as best we could, as best we were allowed by you. We never abandoned you. We were there by your side every step of the way. Even if you couldn't see us, even if you couldn't feel us, we were there and we love you. Yeah, that's beautiful. So there's going to be a healing around some of that energy, those energies of feeling abandoned, of feeling overlooked. It's like this angel's doing like Reiki over the top of this little boy's head, right? But they're saying, don't be afraid to ask for help. Like, yes, like, don't hold a grudge that you asked for help in the past and it didn't work out. Like, if you need help now, keep asking. Keep asking. And now we can see differently too, right? Like they may not be able to directly intervene with something, but they can give us help in the way of giving us that realization or that understanding that we need to have. Sending us somebody else who can inspire us, teach us how to help ourselves. Because ultimately that's what we all want to learn to do, right? It's not about some other savior coming in. We want to learn. We, came, we come here to learn how to save ourselves. There are people that have supply assistance along the way, right? And we apply that assistance for others. 
But ultimately, we want to learn how to do that for ourselves. It's that whole teach a man to fish energy. All right, then we got Archangel Raphael on the bottom of the deck. See with enlightened eyes, open to abundance. He is also the angel that represents healing and health, right? So uh, bringing forth that healing energy on whatever level of being you need it. Spiritual healing, healing of perspective, right? Mental, emotional healing, physical healing. Um, work with him during this portal. He wants to assist you in that way. And then I love this, and I'm going to read this one. Be an ambassador for Earth. Build your bridge to source. Seraphim, Seraphina. All right, and then there's more There's more energy here, more messages surrounding uh, this energy of being a con uh, conscientious guardian of this planet, working, co-creating with others in order to, to uh, bring the change and that harmony with the, with the earth. So a lot of that en energy coming through, really working with Gaia during this portal. But we're going to read for closing the Seraphim Seraphina. Seraphina is one of the awesome angelic beings who surrounds the Godhead, carrying divine feminine light. She steps her frequency down through Neptune, the planet of higher spirituality, where we're not just talking about Neptune earlier. She does not have an ethereal retreat, but can be accessed anywhere. She vibrates on every color and has a translucent quality. Seraphina helps you to open your stellar gateway chakra, where we're not talking about that, and assists you in building your onto Karana Bridge to Source. Her main mission is to overlight the great crystal chakra that is found between the stellar gateway and source. Here with Archangel Metatron, she oversees the intergalactic schools for this universe. How perfect is this, you guys? The great crystal chakra that is found between the stellar gateway and source. All right, those those higher ones that we were talking about that 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 uh that we can't necessarily name. When your stellar gateway chakra is sufficiently open, if you wish to serve as an ambassador for Earth, you may apply to attend her courses on the inner planes as you sleep. Interesting. Choosing this card suggests that you are acting as an intergalactic ambassador in your sleep or are training for this role. You may even be part of the team that advises the intergalactic council that runs this universe. You are on a path of service and to perform to the best of your ability. <clears throat> you are reminded to keep your energy fields pure and high frequency. To ensure your 12 chakras are clear and open, it is suggested you follow a routine of bringing high frequency energy such as the Christ light, the lilac fire of source, or the Mahatma down through them. When you become a unified column of light, mentally reach your, through your stellar gateway to Serafina and let her light connect with you. Really interesting. So really reinforcing and com confirming that energy of our stellar gateway chakra being activated during this 5-5 portal. And uh, really this energy of uh, what we're doing in our sleep, you guys. We're doing some interesting thing in our dreams. Some of us are ambassadors for Earth working with the intergalactic and galactic councils. Galactic Federations, right? Uh, so, yeah. That's funny with the life path on the bottom of the deck, right? Life path and star child. <laughs> yes, some of us uh, really uh, having receiving those activations along our life path. Finding our, our, our um, life path going in some interesting uh, directions, right? For some of us, our life path is calling us to work with these star children. Uh, I can certainly relate to that one. All right, you guys, I appreciate you so much. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you have an amazing 5-5 portal. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, and let me know. If you know others who would enjoy this information and this reading, make sure to share it with all of your friends. I appreciate you guys so much. You are so incredible. If you would like to donate to this channel, there are links down below in the description box uh, where you can do so. My email is also down below with a list of the different services that I offer. I offer really 
powerful. Angelic healings. I offer theta healing sessions where we can work on these belief systems that were created, right? Some of these childhood wounds really shift that energy. Uh, lots and lots of different things. Personal readings, of course. Astrology readings. So uh, if you're so inclined, just uh, reach out to me. We'll figure out what is best for you at this time and will serve you the most. Ah, so much love, so much light to each and every one of my beautiful, beautiful starseeds. Thank you for the beauty that you bring to this planet. Thank you for your light, for shining that light more and more brightly every day. Thank you for all you do to assist this planet. Take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you soon.